Hi everybody and welcome back to Room 9, our region's largest classroom. My name is Miss St. Louis and I am a teacher at Rogers Elementary School in the Melville School District and we are located in South St. Louis County. Today I'm here to teach a reading lesson that's geared towards students who are in the third grade but all learners are more than welcome to join and explore along with us. So let's get started. This week, we are talking about all things poetry. Now, yesterday, we began by talking about the different types of poems that there are, as well as the different elements that we can see in poetry. So some of those we learned about yesterday were that poems are made up of lines that are grouped into stanzas. And we can kind of think about those in a similar effect to sentences and paragraphs, right? Sentences are written and built into paragraphs. And when we talk about lines, lines are written and then built into stanzas, right? So they kind of correlate a little bit there. We also talked about rhyming and creating a different rhyming patterns within your um, poetry. Now, as we saw yesterday, not all poems have to have writing, have to have rhyming, um, but some of them, are, and many of them do, and they have different patterns, right, that help to create a rhythm. We also talked about mood and how authors choose to use different um, words to help elicit a different mood. We also talked about the speaker or the voice right and so who is telling that story the point of view or the perspective of um, who that story is being told from that narrator and we hinted yesterday about sound devices and today we're going to dive in deeper to sound devices and what they are and we're going to look at some poems and try and identify some of the different sound devices that these poems use so what are sound devices? Well, sound devices are words that create sound and enhance the rhythm of a poem. Okay, so we're looking for words that are going to help build up some of that rhythm that we feel when we read a poem. So the first one that we're going to talk about is repetition. When you hear that word repetition, you kind of hear that word repeat in it. And there's a reason for that. Repetition is when you repeat the same word, line, or stanza, okay? So it's the repetition of a word or a phrase, okay? So an example of that would be, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands, right? We're repeating the same line. It could be that we're just repeating the same word over and over again, right? So repetition is building up that repeating sound. We also have alliteration. Now, alliteration is repeating the same consonant sound. So whew, those two can get a little tricky. Let me show you an example of alliteration and then we'll kind of compare the two. An example of alliteration is Samson the studious snake slid down the snow covered slope. So you can hear that we're repeating that consonant sound of the S, right? Samson, studious snake, slid, snow, slope, right? Another example might be that tongue twister, Sally sells seashells by the seashore, right? So in tongue twisters, we repeat that same consonant sound over and over. So repetition is repeating a word or phrase. Alliteration is repeating a sound. Now, we didn't use any of the same words, right? Samson, studious, snake, slid, snow, slope. None of those words are the same. We're just repeating a sound, okay? So that's something we have to be careful because it's very easy to get those two words kind of mixed up in your head because we're in both, we're repeating, okay? So repetition, right, is words. Alliteration is sounds. Then we also have two others. Next we have rhyming, right? Rhyming is words that have the same ending sound. And we talked a little bit about rhyming yesterday. So let's see if we can put you to the test. Can you tell me a word that rhymes with red?
Good bed. Head, said, led. Okay, okay, let's see if we can get a little trickier. Can you tell me a word that rhymes with door? Ooh, good floor, more, sore. Oh, you guys are so good with your words. All right, one last challenge one. Can you tell me a word that rhymes with white? Ooh, light, sight, bright. Man, you guys are good. Excellent job, right? So we're taking the ending sound, right? And finding words that have different beginnings so that we can create that rhyming pattern. Now, we also have onomatopoeia. And onomatopoeia are words that imitate sounds like zoom, boom, bang, hiss, right? So they're imitating some of those sounds that we might hear from other animals. So what's an onomatopoeia sound you might be thinking of? Ooh, good roar, crash, pow, right? All of those are really great onomatopoeia words. Sometimes I like to think about them as words that I might see in some comic books because we often see onomatopoeia in comic books as well. So these are the different sound devices that we can see in poetry that help to create sound and rhythm, okay? So today, as we read and explore some different poems, we're gonna be looking to see if we can find some of these sound devices, okay? So the book that we're going to be reading today is called Leaf Litter Critters, and it's written by Leslie Bouillon. So this is a collection of um, books all about some insects. So let's start with our first poem, Litter Critters. Hmm, that almost kind of rhymes itself, doesn't it? Between soil's grains of weathered rock, beneath its veiny leaves and scraps, amid its ribs of rotting sticks, soil's little critters find the gaps. Their world is dark, most feel their way, through water films and chemical maps. In stations on the brown food web, soil's little critters mind the gaps. Mixing, shredding, sliming, spreading, nutrient transfer, energy flow, tunneling, chewing, hummus pooing, decomposers help plants grow. When green food webbers live then die, their corpses would be nutrient tracks. If not for Earth's recycling crew, soil's little critters fill the gaps. Ooh. So, what sound devices did you hear in this poem? Hmm. Was there any repetition of words or phrases? There was, right? So at the end of our first, second, and fifth stanzas, right? We repeated, soil's little critters find the gaps, okay? So it changed a little bit, right? This one's soil's little critters mind the gaps and soil's little critters fill the gaps, but we repeated most of that line, right? Changed up one word to fit that what went on with that stanza, but, we're keeping some of that repetition to keep that ending rhythm. Okay, what else did we notice here? Oh good, there was some alliteration right here in our third stanza, shredding, sliming, spreading. That's right, you're hearing that consonant S being repeated. Very good. Was there any rhyming? right? So we're seeing that um, our second and fourth in the stanzas rhyme, right? Scraps and gaps, maps and gaps, 
traps and gaps. Okay, so we are seeing a little bit of rhyming in here that's helping to create the rhythm of the poem. Now let me read to you my little science note, because one thing I really love about these poems is that while they also have poems, they also teach me something new, and I always love to learn new facts. So our science note, the leaf litter layer, also called the depth, is the crossroads where air, soil, water, plants, animals, and microbes meet. It's an ecosystem hiding beneath our feet, teeming with the billions of tiny busy recyclers of the brown food web. The brown food web's key decomposers, microscopic bacteria and fungi, are especially good at changing dead organic matter, dead matter from organisms like animals and plants, into useful nutrients. These decomposers become tasty nutrition packets for other brown food web organisms to graze on. Still, others chew and shred dead organic matter into smaller bits. Some dig tunnels, mixing organic matter into deeper soil layers. Many brown food webbers eat a mixture of foods, including each other. All of this chewing, tunneling, and pooping improves soil's ingredients and structure. Healthy soil contains di digested organic matter called hummus, mixed with tiny grains of weathered rocks and minerals. The continuous work of the Earth's brown food web critters recycles the nutrients plants need back into the soil. Plants absorb these nutrients from the soil around their roots, an area called the rhizosphere, and use them as building blocks to grow and make energy for the plant eaters of the green food web. Wow, who knew all of that was going on just below our feet? Kind of crazy how much can be happening and we don't even see it. Wow. All right, let's try a different poem. See if we can notice some different sound devices. Are you ready? The Rotifier, our somersault and telescope. Head to toe, or head toe, head toe, here I go. When soil's too dry to swim, I cope. I somersault and telescope. My crown will wave again, I hope. And when I can't swim to and fro, I somersault and telescope, head toe, head toe, here I go. Well, what sound devices did you hear in this poem? Hmm, should I read it again? I'll read it a little slower this time. Listen to see if you can hear any repetition, alliteration, rhyming, or onomatopoeia. I somersault and telescope. Head toe, head toe, here I go. When soil's too dry to swim, I cope. I somersault and tels telescope. My crown will wave again, I hope. But when I can't swim to and fro, I somersault and telescope. Head toe, head toe, here I go. What did you notice here? Yeah, there was a lot of repetition in this poem, right? We're seeing the repetition of the head toe, head toe, here I go. The I somersault and telescope. Okay, so we're seeing some repetition of lines that helps to build up some of that rhythm. Anything else? Yeah, there was some rhyming, right? Um, telescope, cope, telescope, hope. Okay, so we're seeing some rhyming in here as well to help build up that rhythm. Very good. You guys were some great sound identifiers. Now let's check out our science note. Ratifiers are one of the smallest multicellular animals. They live in water and in water films on soil and leaf litter. Their crown of hair-like cilia beats them, or help, cilia beats to help them swim. Whew, I should read that again. The crown of hair-like cilia beats to help them swim and creates currents to bring food into their mouths. The waving circles of cilia look like spinning wheels, which explains how this animal got the name rotifier, Latin for wheelbearer. In less, most, less moist environments, they stretch and shrink along like inchworms. In very dry conditions, they can form into a capsule or cyst. In the brown food web, Rotifiers are not only scavengers that eat algae, fungi, and bits of dead organic matter, but are also predators of bacteria and protists. Very cool. 
All right, let's see what's next. Oh, let's try this one. You ready? Nematodes. We wiggle through water film, flip, flick, whip, slip. We are quick. With layers of lips, we slip. Bacteria and nip sticky funguses, unless it's a tricky trap, fungus attack. And we are the snack. Oh, that's a really good poem. I'm gonna read it one more time. We wiggle through water film, flip, flick, whip, slip. We are quick. With layers of lips, we sip bacteria and nip sticky funguses, unless it's a tricky trap, fungus attack. And we are the snack. Ooh, so what sound devices did you hear in that poem? Yeah, there was a lot of rhyming here, right? We've got whip, slip, we've got um, sip, nip, uh, trap, or, or attack and snap. Whew. It's also kind of hard to see because they, when they wrote this poem, look, they kind of went up and back. Even interesting how they chose to write the, po write the poem. Very cool. Did we notice anything else? Now, one thing I noticed, there was a little bit of some of that alliteration where we have film, flip, flick, right? Or hearing that consonant F repeated once. Very good. Let's check out the science note. Scientist E.O. Wilson estimated that four out of every five animals on earth are nematodes also called roundworms. Soil nematodes live in the thin films of water between soil grains, and most graze on bacteria and fungi. Their waste release lots of the nitrogen that plants can use directly into the rhizosphere. Nematodes are food for soil predators. Some springtails slurp them in like spaghetti. Certain fungi attract nematodes, then trap them in a noose or on a sticky hyphal thread. It's eat and be eaten in the wild world of soil nematodes. Very cool. You guys are doing a really good job at identifying some of these sound devices. All right, let's try a different one. This is called night duty. Under bark and through the dust, they scuttle by the dozens. They're insects, distant relatives. They're crab and lost lobster cousins. They're smallish bugs with longish names, terrestrial crustaceans, with 14 land legs all the same, they're isopod sensations. They're sow bugs, pill bugs, roly polies, wood lice, also slaters, with four antennas sensing clues, they're superfood locators. The crew can chew the whole night through in dead leaf demo demolition, and then they chew each other's poo for extra rich nutrition. That's that poem had really good rhythm, don't you think? I'm gonna read it again, I'll read it a little slower. Listen to the rhythm that these sound devices help to create. Night duty. Under bark and through the duff, they scuttle by the dozens. They're insects, distant relatives. They're crab and lobster cousins. They're smallish bugs with longish names, terrestrial crustaceans. With 14 land legs all the same, they're isopod sensations. They're sow bugs, pill bugs, roly polies, also, wood lice also slayers. With four antennas sensing clues, they're superfood locators. The crew can chew the whole night through in deadly demolition. And then they chew each other's poo for extra rich nutrition. Whew. What did you think about that one? Yeah, I thought that was a really good poem. What sound devices did you hear in this poem? Oh yeah, there was a ton of rhyming in this poem. We've got dozens and cousins, and we've got names and name and same crustacean sensation. It was even getting a little tricky sometimes to say some of it because those sounds were repeated so often. But that's what really helped to create this rhythm in this poem was the rhyming. Oh, it was fantastic. Whew. Let me ask, am you going to bottom pee in this? Because I haven't seen a lot of that yet. Hmm. Hmm. 
You think if you wrote a poem similar to this, you might be able to use some onomatopoeia? Yeah, maybe, right? We're talking about scuttling, so there might be some noises that are made from scuttling. We talk about chewing, right? So we might be able to put in some noises from chewing. Ooh, it could definitely help to get in some of those other senses. So here's our science note. Like other soil animals that chew up dead and decaying organic matter, soil isopods, also called sow bugs and pill bugs, break leaves and bark into smaller pieces. This makes it easier for the enzymes from their gut bacteria to get to work. Soil bacteria live on isopod fecal pellets, making these solid wastes extra nutritious for hungry mites, certain springtails, potworms, and other isopods. Right, so iso means same and pod means foot. So the same foot. To avoid becoming a meal for birds, centipedes, beetles, and others, some sow bugs play dead while pill bugs roll themselves into an armor plated ball. Oh, you know what I call those? Roly polies. Terrestrial or land-living isopods evolved from the water-dwelling species and still breathe with gills, so they must remain moist. Instead of losing precious water as urine, they expel ammonia vapor into the air. Pee-you! Very cool. I learned a little something new there, didn't you? Oh, yeah. All right. I think we've got time for one more poem. Okay. In defense of millipedes. When vexed, millipedes are flexible. They will spill awful smells or curl in spirals, while their exoskeletons shelter pairs and pairs of pushy feet. They wait until threat ends, until their world is wet, and when, then they decamp, seeking damp plant rot to eat. Sweet. Oh. Oh, what did you notice in this poem? devices in this poem, do you? We don't have a lot of repetition, right? Not many words are repeated. There's no alliteration. No rhyming. A little at the end, right? We have eat, sweet, hmm. and no one of the appear. Huh. So you know what? Some poems don't have sound devices. And that's okay too. Remember, we talked about free verse poems that don't follow any rules and don't have any patterns. And so sometimes some poems don't have sound devices, right? Just like we saw yesterday, some poems don't have rhyming. Okay, so some have no sound devices at all and that's totally okay. All right, so not every poem has to have sound devices. It's something that you can find but as we've noticed today, some poems have repetition, some have rhyme, some have all the sound devices in them, and some have none. So it's something that we have to be aware of, that sound devices can be used in poems, right? And so sound devices are words that create sound and help to enhance the rhythm of a poem. So today we talked about four different sound devices that we can find in poetry. We talked about repetition, which is when you repeat, <laughs> excuse me, repeat the same word, line, or stanza. We also talked about alliteration, which is when you repeat the same consonant sounds. Now remember, don't get those two confused. Repetition is words and alliteration is sounds. It can be really easy to get confused. We also talked about rhyming, and rhyming is when words have the same ending sound. And that's something that we often associate with poetry, right? We often think about rhyming when we talk about poetry. Um, and we also talked about onomatopoeia, and those are words that imitate sounds. Now, in the poems we read today, we didn't get to see a lot of examples of onomatopoeia. 
but that doesn't mean that there aren't poems out there that include onomatopoeia. So be on the lookout for some of those sound words like zap, hiss, crash. Okay. So as you are going around and maybe writing your own poetry or reading poetry, I challenge you to look to see, hmm, are those some sound devices that I see? And so I want you to think about how they add to the rhythm, right? So what rhythm are you finding from this poem? And even when you do that, think about music. We talked a little bit about music yesterday. As you're maybe singing a song or humming along to a song, as you're listening maybe on your ride to school, are there any sound devices that are being used in that song? Is there any repetition or alliteration? Is there any rhyming or onomatopoeia? Now, songs are a form of poetry that we very often hear every single day. I know that I hear and listen to the radio every day when I'm on my way to work and listen to music. So I can take a chance and see if I can find any sound devices in that form of poetry, right? That lyrical form of poetry. So that might be a way that you can try and apply sound devices to your own world. All right, boys and girls, I hope that you had fun today. I hope that you take a chance to try and find sound devices in your own world. And I hope that you'll join us again tomorrow as we dive in a little bit deeper and talk about figurative language in poetry. Until then, see you next time. Bye everybody, have a great night. is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.